led me to the, to the conclusion that emotion is a sensory process. And when we all understand what's going on with the emotional process, then it, some of these extreme experiences like manic depression where, uh, where you have intensified joy in the manic phase or intensified sadness in the depression phase or a rage disturbance where you have such anger that it bursts out in violence or fear to the point of paranoia. We're talking about exaggerated human experiences. So um, the take home message of all of the research that I've done is that we have this fabulous inner sensory system of emotion that once we understand it, it makes a whole lot of sense of what's going on with these people of heightened sensitivity. And when we see people like, like Mona and my brother, for example, they're to me, incredibly intelligent and full of potential and oftentimes highly creative. And there's, it's been said that there's a fine line between insanity and creativity and genius, and I'm a huge believer in that. For these people actually have a wider range of perception than the rest of us. They just don't know what the emotional sense is and how to deal with it. So in the future, Lillian and I are going to be discussing exactly what the emotional sense is doing for us and how we can all use it to attain that wonderful, this elusive thing of mental wellness and will also cast a, um, a tremendous light on the whole idea of medical illness, especially mental illness, and um, offer a tremendous amount of hope. Because when we recognize what's going on with emotion, it is an internal guidance system. And when we see all the disturbances and all of the negative emotion, the opposite side of that is a profound positive emotions of faith and compassion and hope and trust, the negative emotions are steering us toward creating these experiences instead. And when we recognize how to decode the signals and think and act in ways that the inner voice is giving us, then we'll recognize that we all have voices inside and we won't say that your voices aren't supposed to be heard and that your voices are demons. We'll recognize that we all have this capacity and learn how to follow its advice. That's a really profound and amazing system. So with all of that going on, to look at someone like Mona and her experience and how society treats someone in that situation, it's, you can see why she's willing to come on and tell her story and help educate the public and ask that we be civil and cordial and understanding and even perhaps loving uh, because they have a lot that they can teach us about humanity and um, there is a tremendous amount of hope and that I would recommend highly that she recognize um, the patterns in her own uh, eating and sleeping for there's manipulations of her chemistry that she can do instead that can replace some of the medications. Um, for example, uh, my brother, who I love dearly, has recognize that he had some profound um, allergies and that between how he was trying to eat and what his allergies were, those were causing the very uh, chemical imbalances that were taking his sensitivities to the ranges of extreme that are characterized by mental illness. So there's uh, a lot that can be that can be done simply by changing your lifestyle and your approaches toward diet and, and eating and, and general happiness. So there's a lot more to talk about, but um, I would encourage everyone to think about emotional and mental illness and wellness in a different sort of light after our conversations. Thanks. I think as a whole, um, it gave the, it, the whole thing. It gives the friends and lot so, sort of an insight how how we learn how to maneuver and how we deal with things. We did a show a few weeks ago called uh, Laughter, um, a, a prescription laughter. Some, sometimes you know we we do need to laugh and we do need to be happy, and that takes care of a whole lot of things there. You know. Oh, I have lost mm -hmm. my sense of humor. It takes yeah. a lot for me to laugh, mm -hmm. but that's due to the medication, I think. Yeah. And, and so all in I'm all... I'm more stoic now. Mm -hmm. So all in all... I'm a all, thinker. Mm -hmm. I listen to voices, but I don't think for myself sometimes. Unless I'm doing something. Then I'm focused and I'm right there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm really... I'm just really happy that you agreed to do that. And uh, um, my... The, the counselor I know is going to be really proud of this one because he didn't think I could do this, you know. Uh, sit here and talk about uh, mental illness with, with one of the friends for a whole hour. and So we proved him 
wrong. We proved him wrong. Or, oh, you know, good so for that's you. That's wonderful. No, you know, I, I did need to help with somebody. And again, you know, tolerate your fellow man. Um, lend a helping hand. Um, be cordial. Um, and uh, I don't know what else to say because that pretty much covers it, you know. And we all do have, we all have bum. Not all of us. Most of us have bum relationships. That has nothing to do with it, you know. So I, in any way, I wish you well, and uh, guess I'm gonna see a lot of you, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna ride your bike all summer, huh? Oh yeah. Okay. And you can help me do my garden if you don't mind. We gotta go. The hours up already. Didn't take long. Um, thank you for coming, and we'll see you again next week. And feel free to speak to us on the street, no? Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Mona. Thank you. <laughs>